microscope of Anton van Leeuwenhoek enabled him to discover the extraordinary world of microorganisms. He observed bacterial cells, sperm cells, and ciliates. He sent detailed descriptions of his observations to the Royal Society of London. Although he used the language of simple people, his descriptions aroused the interest and admiration of scholars, and they accepted Leeuwenhoek into their society. An Englishman, Robert Hooke, who lived from 1635 to 1703, is considered to have discovered the cell. Hooke was an all-round scientist. He was a physicist, a chemist, an astronomer, an architect, and a biologist. He also constructed his own microscope. His book, Micrographia, was published in 1665. It was dedicated to His Majesty Charles II, and contained descriptions and magnificent drawings of Hooke's microscopic observations. In Micrographia, Hooke presented the structure of cork. In describing this, he used the term cell for the very first time, because the system he observed, which was in fact formed by dead cork cell walls, reminded him of the cells occupied by monks. Marcello Malpigi was a professor of medicine who lived from 1628 to 1694 and developed methods of preparing microscopic specimens. He described, among other things, the structure of red blood cells, the vesicular structure of lungs, and the structure of renal tubules. He was also interested in the anatomical details of plant structure. Malpigi was the first to observe that plant tissues are composed of what he called vesicles. In 1831, the English botanist Robert Brown, who lived from 1773 to 1858, discovered the nucleus. His research was carried further by the German botanist Matthias Jakob Schleden, who lived from 1804 to 1881. In 1838, Schleden came to the conclusion that all plants are composed of cells surrounded by a membrane, and that they contain the same structures and cooperate with one another. Schleden believed that the nucleus takes part in the formation of new cells. In the following year, the German physician Theodor Schwann, who lived from 1810 to 1882, stated that animal organisms are composed of cells. Thus, these two German scholars, almost simultaneously, formulated two basic principles of the cell theory. First, that all living creatures are composed of one or more cells. And second, that cells are the basic units of function in living organisms. The third principle of the cell theory was added in 1855 by another German researcher, Rudolf Virchow, who lived from 1821 to 1902. In his famous aphorism, Omnis Celluli Cellula, which means all cells come from cells, Virchow expressed the discovery of the fact that new cells arise from the division of already existing cells. The last principle of the cell theory was formulated in 1889 by another prominent German scientist, August Weismann, who lived from 1834 to 1914. The principle says that all cells come from cells that lived in ancient times.